Listen up or run for cover. Dropping knowledge from the people who have it to the people who need it. The, the real Robin Bradley Bombs. is dropping. What it is, Brad Lee back again with another episode of Dropping Bombs today in the studio, folks, or not in the studio, but definitely in the virtual yeah. studio. I've got Jack Siney. Welcome, Jack. Hey, bro. Thanks for having me. I always said I'm in your East Coast beachfront studio now. So anytime you need to you know, bring folks into Florida, just roll them in my joint here. And I got my promos up. So now I'm, your, I'm your new East Coast facility. Got it? I appreciate that. <laughs> and folks, if you guys are wondering who the hell is Jack Siney, well, you won't be wondering for very long because I'm going to tell you who he is, but pay attention to this episode because I am out there looking for things that can allow people opportunity to make money while we're in this shelter at home scenario, yeah. not to mention, you know, all the people that got laid off. And Jack is the basically the leading expert in the world for selling to the government. And a lot of times people don't understand how easy it actually is to get government contracts. Yeah, and I can tell you right now, everybody's worried about, you know, nobody's buying, which is total bullshit, but I can promise yeah. you the government's buying. Amen. That's the so government's true. buying. So, yeah. so, Jack, so Jack folks is uh, the, the chief revenue officer of a company called gov spend. And he has a system on Lightspeed VT, fortunately, for Gov Sales yeah. University, where he teaches yep. you step by step how to do business with the government. It's not that difficult. So whether you're a startup company or whether you're an existing company with, with long history and you've never had a government contract, today we're going to break down how easy it is to actually yeah. do business with the government. But more importantly, really not, not to mention, create some opportunity for everybody listening. So folks in the bomb yes. squad, if you've been laid off, if you're sitting at home worried about the, the COVID crisis and what's happening and you don't know how you're going to pay rent because you were furloughed or whatever the case may be, stay tuned and pay attention because by the time this is over, you're going to be able to uh, have opportunities to go make a living sitting in front of your computer in your underwear. Correct? Amen. Amen. Yes. Look, I tell, I looked for all your listeners or folks watching, don't tune out. You hear government procurement, really folks want to click off. Don't click off. Just, we'll, we'll, we're going to make you wealthy here within the hour. So. Yeah. So listen, I mean, a long time ago, I spent all kinds of money in, in Washington, DC. I had to hire this firm. I, I think they're a lobbyist group and they basically got me meetings with all of the top officials in the world. And by the time I got done, man, it was such a pain in the ass and I had to jump yep. through all these hoops and get on the GSA schedule and finally, I just said, screw it. You know, I don't need to do business yeah. with the government. And I can say without fear of contradiction and with perfect certainty that I probably cost me millions of dollars. I wish yeah. I would have known about you guys back then. Yeah. There, uh, you know, it's funny. When folks think about selling to the government, almost everyone thinks, hey, let me go to the federal government. Let me go to the federal government. That actually is probably the hardest place to start. So for all the folks that are tuning in now that have never sold to the government, please, please, please try not to start with the federal government because it can be, as you just mentioned, very daunting. And there's a ton of money at the state and local level that's more accessible and doesn't require so many hoops. So that would be where I would start definitely because the federal government, you could get stuck in red tape for a long friggin' time. So, no so, so let's talk a little bit about, about you know, how you started the company and what your background is. Sure. Uh, well, with no uh, plan, I came out of undergrad. I actually went to go work for the Navy um, as a civilian, so I, I actually went to go help the Navy sell F-18 fighter jets uh, around the world. So my first, first day ever in the real world, I went to this pro program management meeting where we were selling F-18s to Kuwait. So I got the opportunity to sit in F-18 fighter jets. So I actually started my career on the government procurement side. So that led to my now 30 years in this industry. So I took that experience, went and got my MBA because I had to get out of the government world. It was somewhat frustrating. Tried my hand at the entrepreneurial world during the dot-com. Uh, uh, late 1990s, I was out in California. I went to grad school at UCLA, I was out in San Francisco. Uh, when the dot com crashed, I came back to Florida and I ran into a guy, if, if you follow the tech world, a guy named Hank Asher, who was a big database guy. He started BBT and Sizen and the TLO. This guy aggregated all the 
public records request that he, ac he actually caught the sniper. If you remember in DC when there was the snipers that were shooting people in the mid Atlantic years ago, yeah. his public database caught those guys because he took all the public records and they knew it was a certain age, lived in a certain area, had a certain car. And they, when you connect all the dots, that's how they caught those guys. So I worked with Hank for a year or two. And then that experience really led to my last two companies. So prior to this company, we actually sold software that worked in the police vehicles. So all the police cars today have laptops in them. We put the software in those uh, laptop vehicles. So that was really an amazing automation of the law enforcement world, which then led, led to GovSpend. And so we aggregate all the purchase orders from government agencies. So we have this huge database. It's 250 times bigger than Wikipedia. It's huge. And we aggregate so you can go in and you can say, hey, if I wanted to go work with the city of San Francisco, you could see everything they buy, who they buy it from, and what they pay. It's sick. It's like that's, cheating in the world was, of sales. I was going to say that's almost like cheating. It's sick. It's, uh, it's unbelievable. It's this massive, for your audience to pick, uh, think about, it's this massive public records request. And we have this patented piece of software. We're able to take that data in, parse it out, normalize it. And then the system works just like Google. So if you type in widget, I, in fact, I always demo iPad. So if you type in iPad, I can tell you every government agency is buying an iPad, who they bought it from, and what they paid. So you can imagine if, if you're trying to go sell to the government, there's 90,000 agencies today. I'll tell you the top 300 to go after. You don't have to like, you know, in sales, we kind of guess and we go, this is a hot lead. These people spend a lot of money. You know, we kind of use this gut feel or we use Google to figure it out. We'll tell you specifically, here's the agency buying exactly what you sell. If they're not buying from you, I'm going to tell you which competitor they're buying from. Then I'm going to tell you exactly what they're paying for. It's, it's a sick data. So what do you do with that information? Just bid lower than they're bidding? Well, see, here's the thing. So here's, here's a stat that blows people away. Ready? So 80% of government spending doesn't go through the bid and RFP process. So I want to repeat wow. that. 80%, the government spends $7 trillion a year before this stimulus package, $7 trillion. 80% of that does not go through the bid and RFP process. There's all these ways. There's about 10 ways the government buys. So what we try to do is link you up with the agencies that are already buying your stuff and then have you use one of the other nine ways so you don't have to go out the bid because going out the bid sucks, right? It's highly competitive, it's low margin business, you might not win it. So we wanna teach you all the other ways the government buys. So they'll actually buy in one of those manners and you don't have to go out to bid RP. It's just a matter of focusing. It gets very much like the private industry, go after the prospects most likely to buy. Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense. And if someone's, yeah. if someone's already thinking, damn dude, I gotta figure this out, go to govsalesuniversity.com Amen. That is that is Jack's training system yep. where he and his cohorts can pop up and interactively train you 24 hours a day, make sure that they test you so you understand the knowledge and ultimately be able to communicate yep. with you through that system as well. You've also got govspend.us, yes. I believe. Yeah, it's got, either way, it's got .us or .com. Govspend is that core database, that big database I was telling you about. It's all these, all these records. It works like Google. You can type in any product any company. So for your folks uh, listening that already maybe sell to the government, they're like, hey, I already know. Well, I'll just tell you this. In our database, when I deal with, just say like a company like Dell, I can type in all their competitors and they can actually see who's selling to the city of Dallas, who's selling to the city of San Francisco. In sales, we always think we know, right? We always have the, I know, I know what's going on. I, I run all these people that have been in their vertical for 20 years. They're like, I don't need your database. I know. And so I say to them every time I go, hey, totally get that. Can I have five minutes of your time? Can I just run one query? And if you're not interested, hang up, I'll never call you back. And I'll tell you 90% of the time, they wind up buying 20 minutes later because it blows their mind. So here, here's a real world example. The big two companies that are in home improvement, one orange company, one blue company, right? The orange company calls me several years ago and they say, hey, I heard what you guys are doing. Blah, blah. It's the head of, this is the head of US government sales, calls our office. So I was like, oh, hold on, let me make sure I'm on my A game here. He says, can you do me a favor? Can you just run the big blue company? Just, just I'd like to see what they're doing. They were doing more with just the Air Force. They were doing a ton of money with the Air Force. Literally in 10 minutes, the guy goes, I'll take it. Assign me up. Where do I sign it? Because he was blown away. They had the Navy and the Marines and the Air Force and literally, or the uh, Marines, and the, the, the Lowe's was selling more to the Air Force than uh, the Orange Company was to all the other services combined. It was amazing. He's like, oh, I'll take it. So crazy. that People feel like they know what's going on in the industry, but the data is normally opposite of what they think. Mm. Folks, data is one of the most valuable things that you can get your hands on. Unbelievable yeah. value in data. Most people don't understand it. That's why, by the way, one of the things I've created with the Lightspeed system is that interactivity. So basically, you could ask questions 
options and assessments and ultimately collect data from the people you're training so you can better train them, better help them, or, you know, uh, zone in on the area that, that best suits the individual rather than just a one size fits all video. How many times have we went through a video and had to watch 40 minutes before we got to the part we were looking for? Just like yeah. DVDs. Remember the DVDs when they were, when they were out, you could like skip Click to the next chapter. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Like, yep. dude, that's, that's, that's kind of what that is. But the, the main reason for that is the ability to collect data. Yep. So you guys, have, you guys have created basically a software that collects all of that data, displays it in a way that makes perfect sense to anybody. So if someone's sitting here selling to the government and you want some inside information, you want some comparative analysis tools, you yep. can log in, check out what people are doing, what people are buying, where they're buying. D does it have names of purchasers and all that? Everything. So, yeah. So if you're going to go call an agency, one of the little side benefits, we'll give you the, their name, title, email, and phone. So from a context standpoint, amazing. And I would just say one other thing. So for the folks in your audience that have sold to the government, there's these bid notification systems that have been out for years. So they aggregate all of the bids and RFPs on the government website. So they go around, they screen scrape, they aggregate the bids and RFPs that agencies say they're going to buy. I just want to be really clear with your audience. This is not a bid notification system. So that's been the prevalent thing you see in government sales or government procurement. Hey, I have a bid notification system. That's not what we are. Right, so this database is all the purchase orders. It literally is everything they're buying. We have a bid notification system, God bless, we can plug you into that. Very much a commodity item though. This is a database of everything they're buying, exactly who they buy it from, and then how much they pay. So very different than what folks are used to, because that's the first five minutes almost every call I'm on, they're like, we already have a bid notification. We already have a bid notification system. I'm like, well listen, 80% of government spending doesn't go through a bid notification system, so I don't care if you're great in that world, you are missing a vast majority of all spending Please stop being so naive to what's happening. And or closed-minded. Everyone always thinks they know everything. Oh, well, listen, when you were talking about uh, GSU, so, so GovSales University, it's really easy for these 90%, uh, by the way, there's, so there's 10 million operational companies, only 1 million sell to the government. So only 1 million of 10 million companies are selling to the government. So 90% of the companies in the U.S. are not selling to the government, which is ridiculous because the go U.S. government's the largest prospect in the world, spending $7 trillion. It's if, you, if you don't have a government and, uh, division, that's stupid, right? But see, of, of all those folks, we talk to people, the, these 90% that don't sell to the government, they love Gulf Sales University. They're like, please teach me. There's this $2 million stimulus. How can I learn easy sale? But I'll just tell you this. The other side are these folks that have sold to the government. And I, I'm sure you, uh, you would agree with this. Like, they, they feel like they know everything, right? They feel like, well, I've been selling to the government for 20 years. I already know I don't need Gulf Sales University. And I say to them all the time, listen, the only difference between somebody that makes 60 grand and somebody that makes 120 and doing the same job, it's all the small details, right? It's just 20 small things. It's not the product. It's not, you know, any, we all know the product. We know the sales pitch. We know the script. It's 20 little things that the best people do. That's what Gov Sales University teaches you. We have a bunch of insiders that work for the government, that sold to the government. And Gov Sales University will show, even if you sold to the government for 20 years, we have a whole bunch of little details that'll double your sales, double your income. Amazing. It's, it has an amazing impact on folks. We know that by all the testimonials we have. So. Yeah. And if they're out there listening to this and they already sell to the government and everything's cool with them, that's not really why I wanted you on the show. The reason I wanted you on the show is because there's a lot of people been furloughed. A lot of people Definitely. been laid off. They don't know what yep. they're going to do. Some of them flat terminated waiters, construction workers, casino workers, you know, totally. uh, all kinds of people are setting their shit in their pants right now yep. going, what the hell am I going to do? Now, obviously, they're sheltered at home. They're online. They're scrolling through social media. And because there's so many people on it, it's hard to find real opportunities. So I said, Jack, come on my podcast. I got a whole bunch of listeners we call the bomb squad. And yep. I guarantee you, there's a lot of them that are either you know, out of work, or they're a little nervous on what's about to happen. Really? So I wanted to talk about how does the average person, let's say I'm a waiter, my restaurant shut down, and I'm literally a week away from losing my rent. What would you have me do? Is there a possibility that I can go to GovSales University, learn what I'm doing and make a living within 30 days? Definitely. Listen, so a couple things. So love what you just said. So GovSales University is less than a thousand bucks. You can go learn how to sell to the government. Really important, you'll learn all, it's not rocket science, it's way easier than any calculus math class you've ever taken. It's just a little voluminous, a number of acronyms, that kind of thing. So any, it's about, Gulf Seals University right now is about 70 plus videos, all about three to five minutes, anyone can go through it, right? That's step, would be step one. 
Secondly, one of the things we'll do, we're trying to help folks with this COVID-19, we stood up this marketplace called govquote.us. So govquote.us, anybody can go there, it's free, okay? Here's what happens. Government agencies right now are going there to put up their quotes, and so not bids and RFPs, quotes that they're awarding in 24, 72 hours. So all day, constantly, government agencies are putting up quotes for things they need. You as a sole proprietorship or a company can go there, register for free, and any service you can provide, any product, you'll be able to go bid on, and you can literally win a government contract. I used to say, hey, you can win a government contract in a couple of weeks. And then we're like, when we started to automate it, now we've been doing this 10 years, we're like, hey, you can win a government contract in a couple of days. Since this COVID thing, literally you can win a government contract in just a couple hours, literally. So you would go to govquote.us, that's where you'd start. You go to GovSales University, learn how to sell to the government, register for govquote.us, so you'll get all these notifications. It's constant, it's a marketplace, it's happening all the time. You can literally win a deal in just a couple hours. Here's, here's a real world example. We had an agency in the Midwest just last week. They put out a request for, it was 174 laptops, okay, on a Thursday. They awarded that contract Monday morning for $150,000. Literally in 48, hour, 48 business hours, they awarded the contract, saved some companies' ass. Literally, it was amazing. So that's happening all the time. And then we can dig in deep. There's a variety of ways the government buys. We could talk about these nine ways they buy outside the bid RFP. But those are the first two steps. Get smart, know, know the verbiage. And, and what I would just add, without being too verbose, when you go learn to sell to the government, it's a skill you'll have forever. It's like learning a language. It's not like when this is over, you'll be like, I don't need that. That skill set you keep forever, your next job, or as you try to get promoted, or when you start your online presence, it's an invaluable skill because again, the government is the largest prospect in the world spending $20 billion with a B a day, $20 billion a day. It's sick. It's sick. So the question is, is how much of that are you getting folks? How much of that 20 billion a day are you getting as your company getting? But again, what if I'm a waiter and I don't have a business? I'm just an individual. Do I have to start a business? Well, listen, I, I think the government right now, particularly, it depends on what, you're, what you would like to sell or what service offering. So uh, the government needs a wide array of things. Just think about this. If you're just a, a sole proprietor, you're somebody, maybe like somebody was, as you were talking about, a waiter, a waitress, and now they're unemployed. I will just tell you, not only did you get unemployed, but the government has a whole new way they have to work. So think about this. The government's been operating, trying to communicate with their constituency in a certain way. Now, all their constituency is at their home. They're dispersed all over the community. And the government's had to stand up all this same thing like we did, all these Zoom meetings, all this online stuff. The government needs a ton of services, things that you and I may take for granted. How do I generate a lot of copy? How do I get smart on Zoom? So they need a bunch of services and people to help them as well. I did, I did a story for, I don't know if you're, if you're unaware, but a lot of journalists are getting laid off, right? So all these people are covering this COVID thing. Then they get laid off. So they're like, where can I find a gig? The government agencies are hiring a lot of the journalists to help them do their social media stuff, help them send the message to their constituency. So there's a lot of both product and services. So if I would encourage any of your folks that are, if they got laid off and they have a social media skill, they're good with computers. If you reach out to your local agency, they need a ton of things to help them communicate with their constituency. They're lost now. Again, they've all been confined down to this little spot. So the government's in desperate need of folks to help them communicate and do things to make sure that the city and the entity runs well. So there's enormous opportunity there. Out, things that honestly most people take for granted, the government's not had in place. They've not had all this Zoom conference. They haven't, haven't all this social media, all these things they need to help make sure that their, make sure that their people know what's happening locally is a huge thing right now, right? But do you need a business? Um, it depends. There's 90,000 government agencies and they're all a little different. So his historically, definitely, you probably need some entity. I, I don't know if they're going to cut a check to Bill Smith, right? But I would just say that the little star on that is with this national state of emergency or local state of emergency, the government, the head of procurement can do almost anything right now to make it happen. So there could be circumstances where you just roll in and say, hey, listen, I'm here to help. And the person's like, oh, thank God. I need you to please make our constituents aware that this is what we, this is what's happening locally. They can't go outside. Here's where the testing stations are. But I mean, it, the reason I'm asking is because again, I mean, you, you don't have to like not go, but what you should do also is be prepared to start your own business, which is easy as shit. You, you go online, right? You can do that tonight. Any, in every state you can get incorporated overnight, right? It takes literally, literally a couple hundred bucks. Boom. You, I could go make, you know, Bradley LLC. Boom. I could go make, totally. you know, thunderstruck merchandise. I could yeah. make any business I want pretty much 
instantly with a couple hundred bucks register with the state and boom, now you're in business. However, a lot of people are afraid to start a business because they don't know what to do. This is an opportunity where if someone's listening to this and they're shitting their pants that, or they've always wanted to start their own business, you might not even be furloughed. You might just be sitting there waiting tables still. And I'm just using that even though most restaurants are closed, but you might still have a job. This is something that you can incorporate or create a, uh, an LLC, literally go to government sales, start learning government sales yeah. university or gov sales, G O V sales university. Yep. Start learning the lingo, get on these, these platforms where you can see what's happened and throw a couple bid in and basically start a side hustle. You don't even have well, to this, go full time. This is the war dogs, right? So people, every time I go somewhere, people are like, you see war dogs? Are you guys war dogs? Like that movie, those two guys that want all the government defense business. So if you haven't seen that war dogs movie, that's it. It literally, that happens. These two 20 year olds want all these Department of defense things. So it is out there. Uh, so what the war dogs movies for your listeners, the folks have seen that that's a real world. That's based on a true story. These two guys created a company and they won all these arms deals and literally hundreds of millions of dollars. Crazy. They wound up getting arrested at the end, but that's a real world story. And I think a quick sidebar, you know, for anybody that's listening, you should go create a business anyway. We're all at home and then let you write off all your stuff. If you have a company, even if you never do anything with it, you can now write off all your internet, all your cell phone, everything you're doing to try to make your life more productive. All those become, you can write off all that stuff at the end of the year because now you have your home business. See, everybody's at home now. All the things, you know, most folks, if you didn't have a you know, professional account, they were kind of, they're just losing that. You now have all these write-offs at your home. So encourage folks to go create a business no matter what, even if you don't do anything with it. At the end of the year, you have all these tax breaks for having your home business and trying to go out and create some revenue for yourself. Way better than going to be an Uber driver, right? Come Dude, on. that's a bomb right there. I mean, you, I just, it just dawned on me like, Normally, like if you have a home office, you can write off a portion of your rent. I'm, yeah. I'm wondering, I'm going to call my CPA and totally. figure out, can I just write off the whole mortgage now? Whole thing. Everything. Like I've, I've upgraded my whole place because I was never home this much, right? So I, all my internet, everything, I've got everything's brand new because it was all just wasn't ready to be online 24 seven right now. So yeah, I've, I'm, I'm putting it all in a bucket. And that is a business expense. So you're right, man. You, people should go start a business regardless if, if they're totally. going to try to mess with the government. And there's a lot of people I guarantee you right now thinking, because if I were listening to this and I was just normal Joe Blow, I'd be thinking, yeah, but I don't have any, I don't have any products. I don't have anything to sell to the government. Folks, correct me if I'm wrong, Jack. You can middleman shit. I mean, you, had the, you had the dropship guy on like I watched a while back, right? The guy, the, the dropship Amazon guy, right? Yeah, but the point, oh, the, uh, the point yeah. is, is you don't even have to have right. any materials or services or merchandise. You have to be smart enough to know, A, how to sell to the government, and then B, what they're bidding on and what they're putting quotes out for, and then look around your local area or get online and source the products they're totally. looking for from the dipshits that don't know how to sell to the government and literally mark it up a little bit and, and pass it along. Listen, let me, it's for everybody listening, just in case anybody's wondering, I hear this all the time, please, one of my little pet peeves, let's just listen, listen, the government buys everything, okay? Let me just repeat that, the government buys everything in capital letters, everything, from condoms to whiskey, everything, the government freaking buys everything, so please, whatever your hobby, thing you're most knowledgeable about, the government buys it, I don't care. You could have the weirdest hobby, Pez dispenser, whatever you, the government buys everything. I promise you, every friggin' thing, everything. And most people would assume, well, the government goes directly to the source. Like if, you know, if, no. if they buy candy bars, they're going to freaking Mars company. They're not going nope. to just some Joe Blow. Why That's would true. they, why would they pay the markup? Why would, why wouldn't they just go to the source? Well, listen, here, here's the analogy. All of us, when we drive around town, right? There's gay ass. I always say this all the time. We hire new people. Wherever you live, there's gay ass probably within 60 cents all around you. Within five miles, gay ass can vary 60 cents. You go to a gas station that you know, convenient, that you like the guy inside, whatever. You don't always go to the cheapest gas station, right? We're all just creatures of habit. We do certain things. Same thing with the government. If you're Sally or Mike and you work for the city of Atlanta and you need a printer, you need a computer, you need candy bars, whatever, you don't have a connection at Mars Company. You know what you need? You need, your constituents need candy bars. We're about to stand, we're going to do, do some outreach to a local community school. You, you don't know anybody at Mars? It's like the real world part of it is they need to get stuff ASAP, right? So however they get it, they don't care how they get it. 
Like they have to make their city run. When we're setting up these test stations, they need the tents, they need the generators, they need the testing stations, they gotta put food out there for the people doing it. It's a lot of real world logistics. Could it be optimized? It could, but the reality is they need to stand it up tomorrow, right? It's like, hey, how do I get it tomorrow? So if you have the ability to provide anything, and, and again, you can go into our service, we'll show you who's buying what. You don't have to guess, you don't have to buy it, stick it in your house and hope the government buys it. We're gonna show you what they're buying the most of. Whatever you're interested in, you don't have to gamble. This is not some like jump off a freaking cliff and hope they buy it. We're gonna show you exactly what they're buying. Now, if that hasn't already fired you guys up and made you like get out your computer and already go to GovSales University, or govquote.us or govspend.com. You can also you can also <laughs> follow Jack at govspend on at govspend underscore on Instagram, govspend.us on Facebook. You can find them. Just go govspend, govquote, or gov sales university. Yeah, yeah. They'll pop up. If you're if you're interested, you can find them. But at yeah. the end of the day, man, most people are sitting there without hearing this thinking, cause I'm one of them, man, it's just a pain in the ass to sell to the government. I don't have this. I don't have that. Like screw it. And, and until I talked to you guys, I was thinking to myself the same shit. And I thought, damn dude, I'm missing a lot of money. Like my training system, I tried to do it. They're like, oh, you got to yes. You got to get on this schedule. You got to get on that schedule. Problem is, is dude, I was trying to get like Homeland Security and TSA right. and freaking uh, who, who, the the Coast Guard, and and you just hit it on the head because it that was a pain in the ass, and that's why I said totally. screw it. But what you're talking about, dude, is the city of Las Vegas buys training. Totally, you got the, it right. Totally. State and local agencies. Yes, I didn't even Start think of that, that, nor did I even try. Besides that, like right now, you got everybody selling hand sanitizer, masks, PPE. Yep personal protective equipment. Um, I called you guys cause I had a, I had a supposed deal. You guys, yeah. you know, looked it up and said foolishness. That's a scam. Uh, a lot of ghosts, a lot of ghosts in the PPE world right now. Yeah. It's unbelievable, man. It's unbelievable. But, but dude, I feel like a lot of people get suckered in with the scent, with the fear of loss. Like, like yeah. I'm thinking, dude, if I just got a quarter and they want 30 million masks and I'm just getting a quarter. Totally. Like, dude, that's a big, that's a big deal, man. I got to get is. involved. And then what you do is you end up, getting scammed every entrepreneur in the world every every arbitrage is out there in that mix because the pvs are a super high demand they are now in our system we've seen them we, you and i spoke they're up five to six x what they were uh just 30 days ago it's crazy it's massive itself for a dollar now selling for six seven eight dollars crazy crazy and and what's crazy er is if you know where there's masks or you can source masks, and by the way, there are masks out there and there are people making yeah. money. I got a buddy made, yeah. that, that made money. He sold oh, to yeah. the state of Illinois yeah. just like this. So, so it is real, kids. The question is, is, are you willing to adapt or do you just want to sit there thinking the, the sky is falling and boo-hoo-hoo, I'm in a situation, it doesn't help, I'm screwed. What about yeah. felons? What if there's a felon wanting to sell? Do, you, do they well, background check you and all that shit? I don't know. I, I don't know. Now what? Now they can vote. So who knows what the, what the last legislation that came through. I know in Florida, now they can vote. So I, every, again, with 90,000, let me give you just some quick stats. So there's 90,000 agencies, right? They all do things a little differently. To parse that out for your audience, going back to your prior comment, federal versus state local. So of 90,000 agencies, there's about 500 federal agencies. They make up about 4.1 trillion. So over half of the 7 trillion is federal agencies. There's only 500 of them, but they make up about 4.1 trillion. That leaves 89,500 state and local agencies. They're spending about 3.2 trillion. So there's a lot more of them, a lot of them, with them, talk to them. But every agency, when we deal with uh, folks, we companies, every agency will do it just a little different. There is not one rule, even with the federal agencies across the country, you might deal with a federal agency in DC, but if you're dealing with your local military base in California or in Nevada, they'll do it. They'll all do it a little differently because it's just like the police department. You ever, you ever see on the crime shows, like somebody gets convicted of murder and they get like 10 years and in another state, they get life. And you're watching that. You're like, what the hell just happened? Right? So all the government agencies are the same. They all have like little rules and nuances that make them all a little differently. So what is happens in Vegas or what the rules are, could be very different from Illinois, which could be very different from Florida. So once you start to the agency, they'll tell you though, the agency, when you have something they need, they'll tell you, they'll say, hey, here's how you can do business with us. They'll inform you because they're very incentivized to make the deal happen ASAP.
Well, government sales university, it doesn't, what does it teach me? Right, all of it. So we, we take you from, we'll take the novice. I've never sold to the government. So the first couple of chapters are about, hey, how do, our sections are about, hey, well, here's all the acronyms. Here's the general framework, size and scope, some of what we've talked about. Then the most important thing, we teach you how to sell your first couple of government agencies. We'll tell you how to look at them. We'll give you some data. We'll give you the top agencies, the top 10 agencies you should target, right? And then one nuance I'll just share with your audience about selling to the government is the following. We say this all the time. We call it our flagship formula, which is the following. You need to go get a government agency, right? So it's a long game. Go get a government agency that loves you. No matter what you have to do, go, go, get, go get a little business with one agency, make them love the crap out of you, over-service them, give them whatever they need. Once they love you, here's what happens. Government agencies are very risk adverse. Nobody wants to be the first one. Once they love you, you'll go get media with the newspaper around that area. The newspaper and the TV love to do stories on what the government's doing. They love to like say, oh, hey, we just installed this new piece of software. It'll save you millions. We just installed these new things. It'll make the community safer. The media eats it up. So when you deploy, say, here's what we're doing. Then you sell in all the agencies around your flagship agency. It's the easiest sale in the world because they don't, the government agencies don't give a crap what you as a sales rep say. You know what they want to do? They want to call over to the agency next door and say, oh, you're using Lightspeed. Do you like it? Is it good? Has it helped your people? When they say that, they all buy. A sales map for a good government sales group should look like clusters. If you had a map of the U.S., you should have clusters like around Atlanta, around Dallas. And by the way, it doesn't have to be the city of Atlanta. Go get Buckhead. Go get a, go get a small agency outside the big city, right? And then you'll sell all the agencies around there because the government agency, you know what they want to hear? Something happens. If you're, on the, if you're on the news or if you're in the paper, all of a sudden it's legit. There's no risk to it, right? So once you're in the news, whatever happens, I don't know why, but once you're on the news, there's no risk working with your company and they'll do business with you. So that's how you do it. You want to, we call it a flagship formula. Go get a flagship agency, get media for your deployment, and then you'll sell, you share that media with all the agencies around your flagship agency you'll sell it at 90% of them. It's a home run formula, promise, promise. Easy. And, what, and once you have a contract, I'm sure that they'll start calling you for other things and then you just source them. Oh my gosh. Oh, I can't believe you just brought that up. So here's the thing. This is once you're in a government, and we all know this, when you go work for a big company, right? For those who are career big company people, once you're inside the company, you know all the jobs, the best jobs, right? When, when you see, if you're on Deed and Indeed and you're trying to find a job, super hard on the outside. Once you're, if you're hired by one of these big companies, once you're on the inside, my buddy went to go work for Apple, you find out all the best jobs, the creme to the creme, right? Same thing happens with the government. Once you get your contract and you do right by them, they'll start feeding you stuff. Hey, I like Brad. He does great work. Hey, Brad, do you guys do this other thing? I know you have sales training, but do you have training on technology? Do you have a way to put in Wi-Fi? You know what I mean? Once you do right by the, the government agency, they'll find more work for you because here's the thought. This is a little long window. I'll be quick. But listen, here's what happens. People that go work for the government, they're risk adverse. They take less salary, okay? But they're working for their pension. They're one of the few organizations that still has a full pension. The only way they lose their pension, okay, is buying something stupid. They wind up on the cover of the paper and they get fired. Then they're the 500-hour hammer, the 400-hour toilet seat. We've all heard those horrible stories. So they're very risk adverse. They want to buy safe things. So once you get your flagship agency and they love them and they love you, they'll siphon you more business because they're like, oh, Brad's safe. Love his company, no risk with him. If I go change platforms, oh my God, it might, we might waste $10,000 and then I'll get fired. They're very risk adverse. So make it safe. The more safe you make it for them, that's what the media does. Get media for your deployment because when the Dallas Morning News says you're a good company, guess what? I don't, I don't have to risk it anymore. I just go to the mayor and I say, listen, look, Lightspeed was on the cover of the Dallas Morning News. Great company. Can we use them? Done. Do you have any training that shows me how to fill out those RFPs or RFQs? Yes. So we have a whole section. So again, 80% of government spending doesn't go out to bid an RFP. But when you do, we have a whole section. It's our longest section, actually, about how to increase your win percentage. So for your folks, companies typically win about one out of three or one out of four bids or proposals they submit, the best of the best. We're gonna, we give you a bunch of, again, small little tips because I've worked on both sides of the house and our team has to help you increase your win percentage. We always say seven to 12%. If you increase your win percentage, if you're winning 30% of your bids, if you now increase that to 40%, it is a boondoggle. There's a bunch of little tips to help you increase your win percentage. It's the largest section in Gov Sales University. We give you a bunch of tips and feedback because you it takes a while. It's like writing a damn term paper, right? When you submit your proposal, you got to fill all these forms and it's a little, you know, a little intricate. 
but we give you some high level tips that are gonna help you increase your win percentage. Shoot, it's probably one of the most valuable things because the bids and RPs are painful, but they are big, big, big money, big money. You get one of these three year contracts, you, after this podcast, anybody can go search Google and just look at the last 10, say DOD contracts. They are like $300 million contracts. It's sick. It's like, what, what the hell's a commission on a $300 million contract? It's like life altering. It's amazing. It's sick kind of amount of money. Once you learn how to do business with the government, then you work your way up to the federal government. Some of those contracts are huge life altering deals. Seriously. Oh yeah. When I, when I did a little research on what the government was spending on training, Oh, nice. It was hundreds of millions of dollars a month. And they were using the stupidest, lamest content yep. and platforms on the market. Yep. And it didn't matter because whoever they were figured out what you know. And they yep, went I, in there and they secured these contracts. And I'm telling you, they were making hundreds of millions of dollars. It is so weird. Like in, in Gulf Sales University, we talk about, here's, here's, the, here's what happens if folks aren't aware. If you've never lived in the Maryland, D.C., Virginia area, here's the total truth. There's a highway that runs around DC called the Beltway. It's this big circle highway runs around the Beltway. So there's world inside the Beltway. These people that live in the DC area. They have figured out how to win these big contracts. And it was it's around the Beltway. They call them Beltway bandits. They figured out how to do business for the government. The rest of the country is like just blind. I mean, I used to live in. I'm from Maryland. I lived in that area. When you, there's there's companies in there, you you would not like have them come wire your house. They're, they the revenue for those three companies is crazy. Hundreds, two hundred, three hundred million dollar companies run by a bunch of knuckleheads. It's crazy because there's life inside the Beltway. They figure out how to win these contracts. And then the rest of us in the country, we, you know, we're happy. We get a $10 million contract. We're ecstatic inside the Beltway and around the Beltway. They hand out those contracts. Seriously, when this is over, go Google government contracts, federal contracts. DOD just awarded that big infrastructure contract to DOD. I think it was like, like $100 billion. It's sick. It's, I mean, it's unbelievable. It's crazy amount of money. So. You have to, don't you have to know somebody or somebody's politicians in your back pocket or you have a lobbyist or? Well, listen, I, I think, again, as we start state, I would start every one of you never done it, start state and local, no doubt. That's where you can do it more normal, just like private industry. You're right. But at what happens, it builds momentum. As you have, you know, you have a couple of local agencies, then maybe you get your state agency. Like you could do the state of Nevada, you get to do their training for the law enforcement group or the Department of Transportation, right? That is the avenue to the federal government. They all know each other, like showing up to the federal door with no references, no background. You've never done business with the government. It's hard. Like they're like, I'm not taking a risk on this company. I've never, they haven't done any government business. I don't, I'm not risking my pension on this, you know, whatever company. And this is they not get, they get fired or something. They would, if, if, if they deploy it and it doesn't work right, like they just do not want to get fired. So start, start local build up the state. And then when you win a couple of state contracts, you can walk in and when you do your proposal, you'll be like, Hey, we're already working with, you know, uh, uh, state of Nevada department of transportation. We're working with the state of Florida department of education. Hey, we'd love to help you deploy this training solution for the DOD or for Homeland security. Like that is how you build it up. Because again, to walk right at the top level, it's like, it's like all business, right? You, whereas if you're an entrepreneurial company, you don't get to walk into Dell or Microsoft or any, you know, day one, when you started Lightspeed at like 2000, you, you know, day one, you, you don't get to walk in the top companies normally unless you have a, you know, inside track. You got to build it up. You're like, Hey, here, we're learning some lessons. Here's what we're doing. And then you build it up and it goes. But if you're in the long game for the government, it is a skill that will pay off dividends tenfold the rest of your life. It is the biggest secret. I'll just tell you this. We were on the back burner for years. I've been, I've been in this government procurement world for 25 years. And when we try to do PR or stuff, it falls flat. Government procurement's boring. People hate it. The last six weeks, all day, I'm in like LA time. USA Today, right before this, I'm on podcast after podcast. People are like, how do I sell to the government? Here's the money. It's been around here for years. And now it's front and center. It's on the front burner. People are like, how in the hell do I go win some government business? And our company's exploded. My day is just back to back to back to back interviews and meetings about, hey, how in the hell do I win some of this business? How do we learn at it? Gov Sales University, all of it. It's exploding right now because the government is the only folks spending money, as you mentioned, in the next couple of quarters. So if please, for all the small, mid-sized businesses, do not wait until July or August when you're almost out of business to go, oh, I should go try to win some of that stimulus. You have to do it now. Get, go get your chops, learn what you're doing so you can win some business here in the short term. It'll grow. Like this, this pandemic has shut down international markets. The U.S. market's going to open up, but business is not going to take off. It is the government. The government's going to spend a ton of money the next two quarters, ton, 
Do not wait till your company is at the end of the road to go after it. Start now. It's a, you send me a thank you card later. It's a huge opportunity. Please, please, please. Folks, I'm telling you right now, like normally, you know, I'm, I'm going to be talking to people, my guests, I talk about, you know, how'd you do it? And what, what, what problems did you have? And when I talk to Jack, I'm like, dude, just come on the show. T tell my people, tell the bomb squad, the opportunity that you've got. Because again, I mean, you're sitting there out of work, you're sitting there with work, you should have a business license anyway, just to write off everything that you're going to be writing off at your house. Totally. But if you're sitting there stone cold, baffled on how you're going to pay rent and how you're going to buy food and how you're going to make your car payments, folks, go to govsalesuniversity.com, look up Jack and freaking get off your ass and do something yes. about it. They're spending billions of dollars a, a month or a day, and you're not getting a piece of it. And I don't care what you sell. You could, you could sell sunglasses, government buy sunglasses, totally, you buy totally. iPods, ear pads. Uh, 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 you could, what about, you know, what if I make things? Do they buy things Eddie, that I, uh, listen, every, every they, the government's in need of everything right now. A ton of technology infrastructure. They don't, they don't buy dildos. I might, I might have to add that to our tagline. I, I, I can honestly say I've not searched that term, but I went all the way to condoms. I'm telling you, they 100% buy condoms. Well, condoms, yeah, so, I'm sure. But, but, but dildos, I come have, on. I, I assume they label it. If they would, I assume they label it something else. But you got to remember, listen, an aircraft carrier is a moving city. You're talking about, you know, 10, 20, 30,000 people out to sea for months. It is a moving, it's powered, it's powered by nuclear power. It's a moving city. So. I, as soon as we get done, we'll go look, see what, uh, I, saw, I doubt that term is in there, but I'm, I would assume there would be well, some form of adult entertainment uh, that the government does buy. I would assume well, well, that yeah. that is a real thing. Well, yeah, then now that you say that, because again, those commissaries that they have, they have commissaries. Well, those commissaries are, are being supplied from outside companies. So I'll bet you anything, you probably can. I have my, my assistant, Maria. That is funny. Her, her husband worked for the government and when we go to Disneyland, she can go to the, the exchange, the government, uh, the, the commissary exchange and get Disneyland tickets. They can sure. get, they can get like things that you wouldn't believe they can get. So yeah. I take that back. They probably do. Uh, again, I, I've said for years the government buys everything, but I'm now going to have to go double check that term. Uh, when we're done, I'll text you to let you know, <laughs> let you know what the spend, uh, I'll have to probably put in some different terms, but I will let you know within an hour when this is over, what the exact uh, number of those are out in the world. So that's good. That's the first time. Look, I've been, I've been, uh, this last six weeks, that's the first time I've heard that one. So touche to you. <laughs> well, I appreciate you coming on and spending time yeah, with yeah. us. You, you mentioned there were nine ways to do business and you said you'd touch on them. What are they? Oh, so yeah. So just really, really quick. So all, all outside of BinRP, folks can go sole source. So if you have something special that you do that's patented or whatever, sole source, they don't go out to bid RFP. Piggyback. So piggyback's a funny little term, but if you've got a government deal, you got a government contract, you mentioned this earlier, Brad, another agency, once you've done that contract, can piggyback off of it. So once you've done all the terms, the agency next door can add quantity to that contract. So once you've done all the hard work to get a government contract, they can piggyback and add volume to that contract. Discretionary spend, that's the third, that's great. Every agency, believe it or not, here's one of the big learnings for your people. Every agency has an amount of money it's like a slush fund. They can spend without going out to bid an RFP. And it's analogous. It's the size of it's based on how big the city. So the city of New York, the head of procurement, could probably spend up to 50 grand anytime he or she wants. Where some little city outside of Las Vegas, maybe the discretionary spends three grand. But if your product is below that number, they can go buy it every day. They could buy it 10 times a day. The head of procurement can spend up to discretionary spend every single day, all the time. So that's discretionary spend. P card. P card is just a credit card. P card just stands for purchase card. Almost every government agency has a set of folks that have a P card, works just like your credit card. Again, if your item that you're selling is below their P card threshold, they'll show their credit card, they'll buy it today, just like you and I do an e-commerce transaction. Simplified quotes. Simplified quotes is basically the govspend.us platform. So if you go to govspend.us, it's all the quotes. It's a commodity. The government agencies say, hey, we need 10 of these. They'll describe what it is. They'll get three quotes and they'll award it. So that's simplified quotes. They're set asides. Set asides. The government just doesn't always want to spend money. They want to do right by the community. So a lot of times they're like, hey, we want to award this to a local company here in our state. 
We want to award this to a woman-owned business. We want to award this to a minority-owned business. So they'll have these set-asides. It won't be free and open competition. They just want to make sure they spend their money in a way that also helps the community. So set-asides, and then there's three more. GSA schedule is what you mentioned. GSA stands for General Services Administration. That's once you get on a GSA schedule, it's a federal contract. Your product and service is on the schedule, and any government agency can go to that schedule and buy it. Now, there's a lot of details in that that I, we don't have time to get into, but um, you have to be secure with the price because your price is up there for two years. But just like you and I buy something online, a government agency can go to your GSA schedule, see what if Lightspeed was on there. I want to buy, I want to buy three licenses for X dollars, they can go buy it. State schedule is the same thing. It works just like GSA, but it's the Nevada state schedule, the Florida state schedule, very much like GSA. Your product is on the state schedule and any agency can go buy it. And then lastly, it's this thing called co-ops where groups of agencies will get together and buy things collectively or some private enterprises got together and say, hey, let's put all the products in Home Depot on a co-op so you can go in and they can go buy all these nuts, bolts, screws on a co-op. So those are the nine ways uh, that agencies are buying not through the bid RFP. And I want to add one more, which is the 10th one, which we're going to add to GovSales University. Now, with these state of emergencies, all bets are off. With the state of emergency, federal or state and local, so if your state is declared a state of emergency, the city you're in is declared a state of emergency, all bets are off. The head of procurement can go out and buy whatever they feel like is essential for the, that the municipality to operate. They don't need to get three bids. They don't need to do anything. Hey, we got to get these testing stations set up. The first person I find that has 100 tents and 10 generators, the whole thing, they can go buy, all bets are off. So that's really now a 10th one, this state of emergencies now, they can go do whatever they want. So sorry for the long windedness. How's the government pay? Do they pay slow or pay on time? Well, it's really interesting. So the government will tend to pay slow. There's two things you should know though. A government contract's like gold. You can go down to your bank, take your government contract, you can go get advanced payments. So if your payment cycle says you get paid every quarter, the government has the highest credit rating there is. You can take your contract to your local bank, get your money up front, just like an annuity payment, because the, the government always pays, always pays, not necessarily on time. Secondly, now in the world of COVID, if you have any of these PPE things, the, the power dynamic has changed. Normally, the government has all the power, and the, and the company has to kind of do what the government says. Well, now the PPE people have all the power. So they show up to the government agency and say, listen, we want to be paid up front. We want all our money before I deliver my PPE to you. So if, you have, if you're in the PPE world right now, you're getting paid up front from the government. Crazy set of things going on, both U.S. government buying things and international folks coming and buying things. Crazy, crazy upfront stuff. And which one is the one that lists what people want? Because right now I'm thinking in my mind, shit, I'm going to go log into that and just see what people want and then just go figure out everybody I know, all the connections I know, and just, totally. just be a middleman. Which one yeah, is so it? So go to GovQuote, GovQuote, G-O-V-Q, U O T E dot U S it happens every day. You'll see a turnover every day. There's 70 to hundred quotes in there every single day. Anybody can register for free. It's totally for free. So if everybody listening, please take, take 10 minutes, go to gov quote, register yourself, even as an individual, just go, you can watch everything. You'll watch all the transactions. Then once you watch it and you get frustrated enough and you miss enough of them, you can then go to gov sales university. That does cost a couple of you know, just under a thousand bucks, a couple hundred bucks. Then you can go to Gov Sales University. So if you feel like you're hesitant, go to GovQuote. You can watch it for a couple of days. You'll watch all the turnover. I was on the phone the, uh, the other day with a guy that does video stuff. The city of Pembroke Pines has a huge quote up there for all AV stuff. The guy's like, oh my God, I'm doing this today. So there'll be something there that pops that you can do immediately. Then you can go to Gov Sales University. You don't, you know, don't take my word for it. Like go, go watch it for a day or two. It'll, it'll so frustrate you. You see the amount of money that's being spent. It's sick. And you ain't getting a piece. So folks, there you have it. Now listen, don't say OBL didn't hook you up in the old yeah, amen. crisis. I call myself yeah. the COVID kid because I'm not affected <laughs> by the, Amen. Like this by the stuff, way, I love your stuff. The stuff you put out, we send to our sales team all day. It's so true. People are buying money. It is amazing. So kudos to you. Yeah, man. People are sitting back saying, nobody's buying. Dude, people are buying all over, especially the government. Totally. Right now, totally. you have to adapt. You have to change. You have to be proactive and you have to do things you normally wouldn't do. And this would be one of them. And yep. as far as, you know, well, government sales university costs a little money. Who gives a shit? Here's what I told someone the other day. Listen, you can save all the money and do nothing until all of your money and resources and credit cards are gone. And now yep. you're in a real situation. Right now, there's a lot of people saying, don't spend money, conserve. You never know what's going to happen. I know what's going to happen if you don't invest any money right now. You're going to run out of it. 
and you're going to run out of options. And then you're going to be sitting there begging somebody to borrow some money. And it's a lot more difficult. Take a little bit of money that you currently have, even if it's a credit card, use the credit card, get government sales university or gov sales university, learn what the hell you're doing, go get that quote, start making money and pay off the credit card. Because if you don't do anything because you're worried about what's going to happen, I'm telling you right now, nothing's going to happen. I always tell people, don't, don't worry about marketing and spending advertising dollars, dude. Nothing will happen. Yep. Literally. Listen, I, I, I tell people, you'll, you'll have it forever. So, for, so let's just say you, you're not in this COVID thing and you don't really care and you think it'll be fine. Learning how to sell the government, I just want to repeat, the government, federal, state, local, 90,000 agencies are the largest prospect in the world. Not in the U.S., in the world. $7 trillion a year. That doesn't even count the $2 trillion stimulus. 90, I mean, uh, $20 billion a day. Right. Just when we ha- when we were done, just go look up what seven trillion looks like. It's a ton of friggin' zeros. People, we see it in passing. We see it on the news. We're like, yeah, a trillion here, a trillion there. Like friggin' get out a piece of paper, write out seven trillion dollars. It's like it's a ton of zeros. It's crazy. It's a ton of money. It's it's we get we get numb to it because we see it on the news. It is a twenty billion dollars a day. It's a sick amount of money. Don't wait until you're out of business in the last minute, as you just said, to do it. Just do it now. It's a skill you'll have forever. It's the best investment you can make for your business career forever. It's like learning a language. You'll have it forever. You can send me thank you notes. It's amazing. It'll serve you so, so, so well. Dude, if I know the bomb squad, a lot of them have already stopped listening and or Googled it and started doing it while we're talking. Another, yeah. another portion of them are going to sit back and do nothing because all they want to do is listen to shit. They never do anything. They just learn and listen and wait and, and critique. And I'm sure we'll get a couple of comments on the YouTube talking about ding, 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 ding. But folks, I'm telling you guys right now, I've seen a couple of recessions. I've seen a couple of situations where everybody was freaking out. Millionaires are made billion dollar companies are created in times like this. And the main reason is because you are forced to change. So if you're hungry, if you're worried, and I just brought you the answer, or at least one, get off your ass and do something big. And remember, share this out because just because you may not want to take advantage of it, doesn't mean someone that you know and love will listen to this because you shared it and find that you just made your cousin or friend or brother or dad a freaking multimillionaire because I'm telling you right now, the opportunities are immense. Jack, I appreciate you spending time with us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Folks, go out and hit him up at GovSpend. Give him the hashtag bomb squad. And as always, keep it real. God bless.